And I'm scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And of course, ironically, I stop at a Tony Robbins quote. And the quote says, and I'm going to butcher it, but it's like, live as though your prayers have already been answered. And something just lit up within me. Take us now to this year where you set out to prove. Because yeah. I love how you're talking about these different elements. You did work a job so that you could stay in the energy that you wanted to embody. Mm -hmm. There's so many things where I think we overlook the power of how our manifestations are coming true, even in the seasons that we don't see yeah. it yet. Yeah. And the way you describe this year is really powerful. So I'll let you kind of start wherever you yeah. want to, but take yeah. us back to that season when you're like, I'm going to prove this. Yeah. I want to first share the inspiration behind it. It actually starts at a Tony Robbins event because at that event, I heard my intuition just scream at me for the very first time because our intuition is always talking to us. Mm -hmm. But we're trained in our society to be left brain and logical yes. and not to listen to that voice. And I feel like there's certain moments in life where that voice just comes through, like no matter what, whether you consider yourself intuitive or not, it's just mm -hmm. like something you can't ignore. So that was my moment for me where I heard this voice ask me over and over and over again, Catherine, who are you living for? And it started Oof. out super quiet. And then it got louder and louder and louder and yeah. louder until it's like, Catherine, who the F are you living for? And I'm like, whoa. So I wrote it down and I was like, this is a really good question. Yeah. So the next day of the event, I come back and I think we're like going through limiting beliefs or something. And I open up my notebook to where we left off from the day before. And it was Catherine, who are you living for? And I answered for the first time ever. The realization hit me. I'm living for everyone but myself. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go to medical school. I am in a relationship that's like two years overdue a breakup. We're and together <laughs> for comfort. And it was a complicated situation. He lived with us and he was very much part of our family. So there's a lot of things that if you look at logically, like you can really understand like, okay, Catherine, I can see why yeah. you didn't break up earlier. Yeah. And then I really wanted to move back to LA. LA is where I grew up. It was my home. It was, mm -hmm. you know, which is so funny because I live here now. I never imagined in my life to live anywhere else but LA, but you know, things change. And so at that event, I made all these decisions and I mm. felt insane. And yep. I remember coming home from, cause I was actually going to this event, staying at my grandma's couch while going to this event. Cause I'm like, Hey grandma, there's an event in LA. Can I stay with you? And she's like, of course. So I come back and the next day I'm like, am I insane? Like I'm about to break up with him. I'm about to go home and tell my parents I'm not going to medical school. Like screw these applications. I'm out. And then I got to figure out a plan to move to LA. Like, am I, I felt so crazy. Mm -hmm. It felt so right, but I'm like, am I mm -hmm. insane? So it was in this moment where I, for the first time in my life, spoke out to some higher power because I didn't grow up like religious or anything yeah. or super spiritual. My mom's into like astrology and like things like that, yeah. but it was never like, this is how you pray Catherine sure. or like, this is how you manifest. Obviously wasn't taught those things. And I, I said, you know, God, universe, whoever is out there, can you, can you send me a sign that I'm on the right path? Like, and if I'm on the right path, can you show me 1111? That's like the first thing that yeah. came to mind. And so I went to go grab a glass of water. My best friend texted me that she's here. She's going to pick me up and we're going to talk this through because she was like helping me. Was this like an intervention or was she on board? No, she, she was, was like, so on board. She's oh, like, thank that. God, finally, like missed you. <laughs> yes, we're both going to move back to LA because we both grew up there. And I look at the clock before I leave and it was 11, 11. And what's mm. crazy is that that wasn't the actual time. It was just a broken microwave time. And I was like, all right. So long story short, finally, four months later, I move in with my grandma. I'm living on her couch because I have no money. I'm trying to figure things out, but I feel so crazy because all of a sudden I'm feeling for the first time in my life, like I just cut myself off from all sources of certainty. My parents no longer support me. In fact, they're very mm -hmm. unsupportive of this path. They were doing everything in their power to yeah. like scare me into going back into medical such school. It's like a parent move. It's such a parent right? move. Yeah. And like, I understand the reasons, but yeah. also it caused me a lot of trauma, mom. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we love you now. But. Yeah. And so, and then I was like, okay, now I'm getting this $15 an hour job. Mm -hmm. And I just graduated from, with a biology degree, which it's like, I don't really want to do anything in the field of biology. Like, what am I doing here? And then I'm like, I'm mm -hmm. in the fitness industry. I don't want to be in the fitness industry. And my intuition kept telling me like, 
you're going to build a brand in the manifestation space. Mm -hmm. Like you are going to do, it's going to be a big brand, but I had no idea what that Mm -hmm. would look like. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. There's no concept. Like I didn't, it's not like I got the whole business plan, you know, downloaded at the same time. Yeah. And so in this one night of confusion, I was scrolling on Instagram looking for inspiration because back then I think all my Instagram was, and you have to think this was like what, 20, 15. I was going to say, it's like early on before early on. the and industry it was, as we know it now. Yeah. And it was just all inspirational quotes. I think that's mm-hmm. all I followed. And so I'm just looking for something, right? And I'm scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And of course, ironically, I stop at a Tony Robbins quote and the quote says, and I'm going to butcher it, but it's like, live as though your prayers have already been answered. And something just lit up within me. It was like, it's such a manifestation concept. And it's like, conceptually, I knew so much about manifestation. Yes, I've proven to myself so many different elements mm-hmm. of it. Mm-hmm. But all of a sudden, I'm like, that's the freaking key. Mm-hmm. Live as though your prayers have already been answered. Oh my God. And then I remember just having this like extension of a download being like, what would it look like if I live, like literally acted as if my success was already inevitable? Yeah. Like, what would that look like? What would I do differently? And so that night I opened up my journal and I wrote out and I've done this practice before up until this point, but this time I'm like, no, this is serious. This is, we're getting, we're getting down a business here. Yeah. So I wrote down exactly what I want my life to look like to, to like, I'm traveling once a month to a new country every month. I have so, you know, this much money. I am married to this guy, which I was dating my husband at the time. I really wanted to marry him. I don't know if he was as interested in me <laughs> at the time, but I was like, this is what he looks like. This is, yes. So I'm like, this is how many kids I have. Mm -hmm. Like I had, this is where I live. I had it all scripted out. Mm -hmm. And then my next step was, well, who do I need to become to manifest all that? How do I approach my life, my business, just how I'm being, no matter what it is Mm -hmm. from this place of it's already done, it's already inevitable. And something about it, and I remember like feeling so much fear in that moment of like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. And so I had to convince myself it's only for a year, Catherine. I don't know where I came up with this, but I'm like, if I could just do it for one year, I'm 23 years old. Like if I, if it all flops, like I'm only going to be 24, like I'll figure it out. I still have time. Right. That was really helpful to me as a thought. But also it was like the most helpful thought of all was, well, what's the worst that's going to happen? Mm-hmm. It's not going to work. And then what? You're going to have to move in to your grandma's couch again. Like you already are, Catherine. You're already living your worst case scenario. So mm-hmm. that was like, OK, I got nothing to lose here. We're going to do this. So literally the next day, I just started doing everything that I knew. So I started um, cultivating. I knew my intuition was very powerful. Mm-hmm. And it's like the key to... You always hear like, you know, people use it in business all the time, especially like female run businesses. Like you hear like, I just got this download. This invention came to me. I asked like, um, I think it was the owner of Spanx. Like she asked the universe for a billion dollar idea. And here we go. We have a billion dollar idea. Right. So I just like started to remember all of these things that I've heard. Yeah. And so I um, started to meditate. So like getting to the nitty gritty, I started to meditate every morning and every night, just being in silence, just connecting to my higher self, just mm-hmm. connecting to that voice that asked me, Catherine, who are you living for? Mm-hmm. I'm like, obviously that voice knows what she's talking about. So I'm mm-hmm. going to tune in. Then I really got clear on who is that version of me who already has everything that she wants. Like, what is she actually yeah. doing? What is she believing How is she thinking? What is she putting her attention on? What is she consuming? Mm -hmm. Who is she surrounded by and Mm -hmm. with? And who is she friends with? Who is she not friends with? Like I went to the nitty gritty details. And then every single day, I would just take a step in that direction. And so I knew, for example, one of my biggest fears at the time, biggest fears was going live on Instagram. Oh, and that relatable. was like a brand new feature back then. Yes. And everyone's like, get live on Instagram. You're going to blow up your business. You're going to, you know, gain an audience. <laughs> and I was like, there's no freaking way. But then I kept reminding myself, hold on a second. The version of me who already mm-hmm. has everything she wants, mm. she has no problem going live on Instagram. So just doing that, I mean, it was a game changer for me because so many people, you know, they think that so much and it's true. A lot of the manifestation work is in what you journal, is in what you do emotionally, is in what you do spiritually, but you have to seal the deal with action. 
And beliefs get rewired. It's like the final step to rewire a belief is to take action as if the belief is true. Mm -hmm. So you can sit there and be like, yes, I'm going to tell myself I believe this. But until you take Mm -hmm. action as if the belief is true, nothing really changes. Mm -hmm. I think science has said that first you change and then your brain changes. Wow. So it's first you take the step, first you take the leap, and then your brain rewires to follow. And then it becomes a habit. And then it becomes easier. Like people say, oh, you know, the first time I did that, I was freaking out. But then the 10th time I did it, it was fine. And now I do it for a living, like no problem. So then I, um, I did these like visualization sessions, very specific, just like walking myself through like an ideal day in my life or just anything specific of like, what do I want my dream client to look like? How Mm -hmm. do I want them to contact me? How am I seeing money flow in? Like opening my bank account, seeing certain amounts of money, I had very specific rituals where I'd go to work, my job, and I set my background on my desktop as my vision board. So I built a vision board, of course, to match up my life. Yeah. And the subconscious mind like uh, responds very well to vision boards Mm -hmm. because it's a very right brain process. You have Mm -hmm. images, you have symbols, you have feelings all embedded into this. So the subconscious mind, which is responsible for 95% of the creation of your reality, obviously responds well to it. I had fake checks that I wrote for like how much I want to create in a single month, put on my wall. Like my boss probably thought I was insane, but he was (laughs) him and her as a couple. They were also like, as Catherine, you know, because they were actually a family friend. (laughs) So this is another piece of why I'm so grateful to them. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you guys, I'm building a business. Like I'm only going to be here for a year. Like I told them I'm going to be here for a year. I'm doing this one year experiment. They were looking for help. And I was like, I will help you. I'm very smart. You know, I have I have skill sets, so I'll help you. And so they were kind of like, "Okay, Catherine's doing her weird things. (laughs) And then I'd walk in every morning and I would like I learned about how like physiology affects like the quality of thoughts that you have and the quality of the vibration that you send out. And so I'd put myself in like superwoman pose and I would say my affirmations like, how does that version of me speak Mm -hmm. to herself? What does she Mm -hmm. believe to be true? I would say my affirmations out loud whenever someone would ask me like friends and family at the time, which were all like Catherine's crazy, but they'd be like, so how's your business going? And I'm like, it's going, it's going really well. Thank you. Like I would talk the language that mm-hmm. I used. I mean, just like the, the language that I used. like I never said the words expensive or I'm broke or I can't afford that. Like I just became very mm-hmm. specific because mm-hmm. the version of myself already has everything that she wants. Is she talking about money in that way? Is she talking yeah. about business in that way? Is she talking about herself in that way? No. So mm-hmm. I just like went all in, like taking all of this very literally and just almost like acting, which I'm not a great actress, but this is like my best form of acting. Like, I'm just going to the performance of my yeah, life. This is the performance of my life. Like my whole life depends on this. Like wow. I really want to build an incredible life and my whole life depends on mm-hmm. this. So I'm just going to do all these silly looking things. And let me tell you, the moment you get one piece of evidence that comes in, mm. it's like, okay, this is really interesting. Like the moment yeah. that I started noticing my Instagram followers started growing. And I opened up, my intuition told me, Catherine, open up a Facebook group Mm -hmm. and just share your teachings in a Facebook group. And Mm -hmm. it was a little counterintuitive because Facebook groups are private, right? That's not how you build an audience. But for whatever reason, the word community kept showing up. And to this day, community is everything to me. That's the legacy I want to leave behind. I never look at Manifestation Babe as it's the Catherine Zinkina show. Mm -hmm. It's really about who is the Manifestation Babe. We all are the Manifestation Babe. So it was really about community. So I started making these videos and going live. Again, the scariest thing in the world to me. And like one person, I remember maybe like, I maybe posted, hey, I'm starting a Facebook group. Here's how you can join. It's like, 10 people joined. Right. So my first time going live, it was just one person watching me. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, okay, blah, 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 blah. And like, I had this idea to call it coffee chats because between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. as I'm getting ready for work, I would notice that I was ready for work by 8 a.m. or 7 a.m. And I didn't have to leave until 8 a.m. to hit traffic and get to work by 9 a.m. And so for me, I'm like, what am I doing wasting this hour between seven and 8 a.m. I'm just going to do this show in this Facebook mm-hmm. group called the coffee chat. And I'm just going to share like any, anything that came to mind, like, Hey mm-hmm. guys, here's a fun manifesting tip, or Hey guys, here's what I'm currently mm-hmm. struggling. And here's how I'm going to overcome it. Or, Hey guys, I read this book. Let me read mm-hmm. this passage to you and let it inspire you the way that inspired me. Just like random yeah. things that came to mind. And then the next week it was like two people watching me and then three people watching me. And then Four people watching me. And over time, it blew up. I think like the last time that I was really active in this group, like actively having my attention on it, 
I think we grew to like 40 or 50,000 people. Mm -hmm. And so that was like, this started building evidence, like, hold on, Mm -hmm. Catherine, this is actually working. This is actually working. And then people would come to me and be like, do you have coaching? Can you coach me? And like, Catherine this and Catherine that. And then I started like my podcast and it just like all went from there. And my agreement with my one-year experiment was, well, if it doesn't work, then I'm just going to, then it doesn't work. I'm just going to move back to my grandma's couch. But if it does, I'm going to keep playing the game Mm. for the rest of my life. And that's literally what I'm still doing. It's like an extension. And here we are. (laughs) 